Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today called Using Temperature Detection Cameras to Fight COVID-19. My name is Matt Burtney, and I will be your moderator for today. And our discussion today is looking at temperature detection cameras manufactured by Provix. Uh, they're used to monitor for anyone entering a high traffic area that has an elevated temperature, which could be an early way to detect COVID-19. Uh, before I introduce our host for today, I'd like to remind everyone that this presentation is being recorded and we'll be sending it to registrants via email after the webinar is finished. There will also be an opportunity for question and answers uh, near the end of the webinar. So if you'd like more information about something mentioned during the webinar, you can use the chat function on GoToWebinar and uh, we'll address that during the Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that we are still working remotely uh, due to COVID-19. So we have uh, our hosts are from way in the west coast of Canada and out east as well. So uh, we are using personal Wi-Fi and there may be some hiccups technically uh, during the webinar. Uh, so we thank you very much for your patience as we get those things sorted out if they do happen. Uh, but without further ado, joining me today is Jonathan McCallum, the Market Segment Manager for Occupational Health and Industrial Hygiene at Levitt Safety and Carly Winfield, the Technical Sales Consultant at Provix. So I will pass it over to you guys uh, to get things started. Thank you very much, Matt. Sorry, I was having a te technical difficulty with uh, with my uh, with my sound for a second. But uh, thanks for the uh, quick introduction, and thanks to everybody for participating today. Uh, as many of you work towards reopening and or business continuity efforts, we're seeing temperature measurement become a factor in many re return to work policies across the country for our customers. Uh, over the last few months, we've worked with organizations that have supplied digital thermometers to their employees for home use, uh, others that have issued non-contact infrared thermometers for use in various departments or locations of their business. And today we'll be discussing how thermal cameras are being introduced into the workplace. Uh, I'm very pleased to have Carly Winfield from Provix with us this afternoon. Uh, Carly will be leading the webinar this afternoon and uh, from there I'll, uh, I'll hand it over. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what uh, what happened. I just had a bit of a technical glitch, as uh, Matt mentioned at the beginning, just working from home right now. Uh, sometimes uh, these Bluetooth connections and everything and internet Wi-Fi connections just don't support uh, the video quality that you're trying to put out. So. Um, so uh, I'd like to introduce myself uh, or just tell a little bit more. Uh, I'm Carly Winfield. I'm a technical sales consultant with uh, Provix um, and I'm going to uh, lead you through the presentation on the uh, temperature detection cameras. A little bit about who Provix is. So Provix was established in 1987. Uh, our head office is based in New Lowell, Ontario, Canada, and we have a, um, a, a sales office in uh, sales office and support uh, installation office in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, as well. Um, so essentially, our uh, slogan is "Now I can see." We provide video enhancement solutions such as cameras, LED lights, um, collision avoidance systems such as proximity detection, um, essentially equipment-based solutions that enhance both safety and increase productivity. Uh, we're a video integration company, integrate uh, many different types of camera systems, uh, manufacturing, man Canadian manufacturer of camera systems. We work with many different industries from municipalities, utilities, um, mining companies, uh, aggregates, construction, police, EMS, fire, hospitals, uh, kind of everything. So uh, we provide customized uh, video solution uh, integrator with LED lights, and we uh, have been providing thermal imaging cameras for a number of years. Uh, so we initially deployed thermal imaging cameras to see through things like dust and fog on a piece of mobile equipment, um, or to pick up a moose uh, in, uh, in nighttime areas. Uh, but essentially, we have altered these thermal imaging cameras to have alarm parameters to alarm uh, when fever temperature uh, occurs. So a little bit uh, about the companies that, uh, that Levitt and Provix are currently working with. 
Um, so you may recognize some of those logos on there. That's just a very small list of the many, many uh, different companies and industries that we are currently working with. And so uh, we'll roll right into the temperature detection cameras. Uh, essentially, with the outbreak of the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, has come the necessity for many companies to screen their workers. Um, so you may have uh, come into contact uh, into a place recently where you may have seen somebody scan your temperature, maybe with a manual IR thermometer, uh, manual disposal thermometer, or you may have even seen one of these temperature detection cameras. Uh, but essentially, a lot of companies have decided that a safe way to go about business um, is to scan their employees or their visitors or their customers just to determine that they don't have a high fever before entering their workplace. Um, so essentially, uh, with a manual temperature detection, something like using an IR thermometer or a disposable thermometer is a, con is a close contact method. And of course, what we're trying to do in the future is you know, social distance and try to minimize that contact if it isn't needed. So those manual tests tend to put the person who's administering the test at risk. Um, it can also be very, very timely, depending on the organization or um, even, you know, a cust customers going into a mall, depending on the uh, flow of traffic of people, it can uh, really, really slow down uh, the cues of people coming in. So something like a quick detecting temperature camera will reduce the time uh, for people to flow through, the traffic flow through. So Provix uh, has developed a non-contact line of cameras to detect temperatures quickly and accurately. Uh, essentially, when somebody walks up to the camera or is within the camera range, it will detect their temperature within one second, and it will essentially uh, determine whether they are above 37.3 degrees Celsius, which is determined fever temperature. Um, it will identify whether they have that temperature and then there will be an audible pass or fail and a green light or red light based on that temperature. So this will help prevent congregated entrances when, uh, when a temperature detection is necessary or temperature screening is happening. So just to tell you a, kind of a little bit about the different models, um, this one uh, I like to call the one at a time or the single person temperature camera in that it will only scan one person at a time or uh, one, per one person at a time. So this camera system is, um, if you think of a tablet um, or a larger cell phone, it's uh, that we've got uh, two, a couple different sizes, um, but essentially it's a standalone system in that there's no requirement for network access. So it can be deployed anywhere. You could deploy it at the entrance of a mall, the entrance of an airport, the entrance of a manufacturing plant, and you don't have to, you don't need internet access. Um, so if you have internet access, the camera has a LAN port on the side and it can be connected to the network, which allows you to program the various features such as that um, temperature alarm. You can edit it from 37.3 degrees to say 37 or 38, depending on what temperature you want to be alarmed uh, when people are coming in. Um, you can uh, essentially, the network allows you to view any of the what's being captured. So as a person would come into the range of the camera, if it was connected to a network, somebody would live view the scans uh, that are being captured. Um, and if you don't have network access, it does, it's like a tablet or like a cell phone in that it has an internal memory. So it has the ability to store up to 10,000 scans. So 10,000 people coming through or 10,000 scans. Um, it scans people in less than one second of them being within the range of the camera. And uh, this camera detects uh, their temperature when they're in the range of the camera. This camera range happens to be 0 0.8 to 1.3 feet. So if you think about, you know, you have to walk up fairly close to the camera, but of course with, uh, with nobody needing to be there to monitor it, it will simply tell you pass, fail, and tell you what your temperature is on the screen. Um, you don't have to worry about coming into close contact with anybody. Um, so one of the co most common questions is, how accurate are these cameras? Um, so this one specifically is its uh, detection accuracy or error range is plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius. 
And uh, when, the, when an abnormal temperature or a high temperature occurs, it will trigger a voice alarm that will say that pass or fail, like I mentioned, the red light or green light. Um, and that can be uh, edited as well. We have both French and Spanish versions available currently. Um, and uh, you could you know, have it to say high temperature or low temperature or you know, come through. You can essentially edit those pass or fail uh, voice alarms to say whatever you'd like them to. And then there's also uh, an abnormal temperature will trigger a relay alarm output, which I'll talk a little bit more uh, when we get through, as we get through here. So just to kind of show you a couple pictures, I always say a picture's worth a thousand words. Um, so these are uh, images of it actually being deployed on a desk. So that standalone camera I'm talking about, we have options of a five inch or a seven inch, and then just a couple different uh, variations of mounts, depending on where it is that you'd be looking to deploy this. So there's a desk mount option, as you can see there on the left. Um, that one's pretty straightforward. It's got a little bit of a weighted base and would just be deployed on a desk. Um, that's the five inch model, and that would require 110 volt power. So it does, uh, you have to plug it in. And that could also be configured uh, for say 24 volt power for a vehicle or say 220 volt power as well for uh, um, a different, uh, different uh, current. Um, so then there's a wall mount uh, version on the side there on the right hand side, pretty straightforward, screw that one into the wall. So for the seven inch camera, uh, we've seen a lot, we've had a lot of requests for an employee gate or turnstile um, because those are implemented at a lot of uh, facilities. Um, so there's the employee or sorry, the gate or turnstile mount um, so it comes with a gate or turnstile bracket. And again, requires that uh, direct plug into power. Uh, this one has been our most popular supplied one so far. So it's a seven inch, if you imagine, like I said, a, a tablet. Um, and then it, this is just a weighted floor base. Um, so it's a weighted base that you can set up, you know, at any entrance, um, essentially anywhere. And then again, that would require the plug into power. So for when no power is available or <laughs> where you want to maybe um, have a little bit more portable option. Uh, we've developed this system, which is uh, stored in a Pelican case, and it comes with a lithium ion battery. Um, so it's meant the lithium ion battery is, will power up the camera for 20 hours. <clears throat> and so we have um, a good example of this one is maybe a construction crew. Um, we've deployed, we've uh, supplied this to a construction company in that they are setting it up at the back of their pickup truck. Um, when they start their, uh, st start their shift in the morning, all of the employees would uh, walk to the back of the truck. Obviously they have no power, they have no network access, anything like that. It's uh, just meant to be a portable solution. They pop it open, every employee Employee walks up, can scan their temperature, and confirm that they have a not a high temperature um, to confirm and start work for the day. And so, um, it, as I mentioned, the camera has that um, internal memory to store up to ten thousand faces. So, in an application like I just mentioned, it would have it would store those faces if you uh, store those scans of the people if you wanted to review that ax if review that data afterwards. And so the battery charger is built into the case and the system can be in use while charging. Um, there's a LAN port uh, for the cable and a charging port on the side of the case. So that one that we just talked about was the uh, single person in that it can only scan one person at a time. Um, we also have uh, some systems that will scan multiple people um, in that uh, it, within the range of the camera. So this one is meant to uh, de be deployed anywhere that you'd like to monitor a high flow of uh, traffic of people um, that would be say moving quickly um, and you know that they would be uh, not necessarily having to walk up themselves. So this would be more of an example at say, you know, an airport or a manufacturing facility um, or, you know, a security station where someone's looking to monitor uh, a large amount of people at once. So this one uh, will scan people within the range of three meters. So they have to be within three meters of the camera. 
to be scanned and it can scan uh, 20 to 30 people at a time, of course, depending on whether they're within that three meter range. Um, so you can see on the left hand side that uh, there's multiple people there, multiple temperatures. So essentially what happens is um, this, this system has to be connected to a laptop. So it's meant that somebody would be sitting there watching and confirming that nobody was coming through with a high temperature. Um, and so what happens is as multiple people flow through, you'll see the um, different temperatures kind of tagged or floating near each individual's head. So as they would walk through that, like would follow them um, and you can kind of see on the right hand side here um, there's a couple people with yellow uh, tags or temperature tags and they are yellow because they're all under that 37.3 degrees Celsius where you can see the one individual there has a red tag um, on their head because they are 37.3 degrees Celsius and you can even pick up their coffee uh, at 41.7 degrees Celsius but um, so uh, as you can see, it's very easy to determine who has a high temperature when there's, you know, many people flowing through because that temperature would tag to that person when they're in, within range of the camera. And so with the, uh, with the, excuse me, with the multi-person camera, essentially it comes uh, stand alone with that a uh, camera on a tripod that must be connected to a laptop or it comes with a black body stabilizer calibrator unit so uh without the black body stabilizer so standalone just the camera its target error accuracy is plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees celsius which is the same as that single person camera i just mentioned and then essentially um, or sorry, without the black body stabler, it's plus or minus a 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and in order to bring it down or bring it up to that uh, 0 0.3 degrees Celsius, you actually have to add in the black body stabilizer. So uh, essentially what that means is because there's multiple people being scanned at one time, it has a, a harder time in capturing that many temperatures at one time. So these black body stabilizer helps stabilize the temperature levels and constantly calibrate the unit in that will that in that it will increase the accuracy to the plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius, which is the same as uh, that single person camera. So it's just a tool that will automatically check the calibration of the thermal camera. And so yeah, you can essentially see that. Um, uh, down at the bottom here, um, the one that's plus or minus 0 0.5 would only come with the camera, the software on the tripod, and then the one that's accurate to plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius would come with those three things as well as that black body stabilizer to farther increase that accuracy. So integrated video management software. So the camera is supplied with a video management software. And what this allows you to do is uh, you can live view the scans that are captured on the camera. Um, and this is where you would go in and adjust uh, any of those alarm parameters. So it's preset to 37.3 degrees Celsius, but this is where you could edit it to say 37 degrees or 38 degrees or um, whatever temperature you want uh, the, it to alarm at. Um, this is where you would edit those voice commands. Um, this is where you would uh, extract any of the data. So essentially um, when the scans are being captured, uh, you can uh, of course, choose to delete these scans, but if you wanted to, um, you can actually extract these in an Excel format without the photos. So it's more of a, it's the data management uh, side of it and where you would adjust any of the settings for the camera. So the, both of the cameras have automated facial recognition. And so uh, essentially this, can be used or not used. So these cameras can be solely used as temperature detection devices to uh, just simply tell you whether people have a high temperature or not, or they can be used a little more advanced. Uh, so cameras do come with the software. The software would get downloaded onto your computer. Um, and then once the camera is plugged in, you'd access the software and you can choose to, if you had, um, if you were using it at a workplace and you had a, 
um, existing database of photos of your employees. You could preload pre those in that when uh, Carly walks through or John walks through, if those names and those photos are preloaded, it's going to know that, say, Carly's coming through with a normal temperature today. Um, if you haven't entered any of that, it can be entered afterwards. So as the scans come through, you see that, um, you know, so-and-so is coming through, you are able to assign the name to that, uh, to that person. And then any time that person would get scanned in the future, it would correlate um, all of those the scans with that person. And so again, um, this doesn't need to be used. A lot of people do have concerns about privacy and uh, essentially it doesn't, uh, these scans can be deleted and you don't need to put in any data. So it has, it would have no idea to associate a certain scan with a person's name unless that uh that data had been input by you it doesn't have like a world uh, database or anything like that and so if the photos are preloaded um, into the database then you can categorize them by whitelist blacklist and etc and then um data such as names employee ids um anything like that can be input by uh to organize by preferred parameters and then uh, you could extract that data if you wanted by say uh, date by employee by ID number whatever data you put in and uh, the facial recognition is not impeded by masks or beards um, there also is a setting on the camera which is um, set to be disabled at the beginning uh, but it can that you could go into the software and turn it on in that it would it could alarm you if anybody was walking through not wearing a mask so if you implemented a policy at your company or you wanted to know that people were coming through and not wearing a mask there's actually an option for it to say uh, please put on a mask um, when and as well as that high temperature normal temperature so that can be added as well and then of course a beard does not affect uh, facial recognition and it does not affect temperature as well. And um, so the, the temperature is actually taken uh, from the forehead. So that's why things like masks or beards don't affect it at all. And so earlier I talked about with the single uh, person camera in that when the high temperature alarm was triggered, it would trigger a the alarm the voice alarm but also a relay output and so what that relay output is is it's a um uh it's a wire harness and it's a connection or an output that will activate based on the alarm settings so we've got of course say that high temperature alarm set at 37.3 degrees celsius so anytime that it triggers an alarm it would also trigger a relay and this relay doesn't need to be connected to anything but you have the option of course to connect it to something and so this relay could be connected to something such as a push notification device um, such as a access control system um, a security system um, it's integratable with a lot of different systems um, the integrating uh, feasibility is that uh, this wire harness or relay output has contacts for normally open and normally closed on the wire harness so if your existing uh, system is integratable with that which a lot of them are um, then it, this system could also be used to say control or restrict access or integrated with a push notification device where it would be set to say send an email alert once a high temperature was triggered. And so warranty on the camera, uh, the first year is included. Um, and then essentially um, there, we can discuss a uh, second or third year warranty option if that's of interest. And just to kind of uh, conclude here, essentially uh, camera systems, uh, these temperature detection uh, camera systems are used to detect people's temperatures. Uh, they detect people's temperatures within one second of the person entering the camera range. So again, that single person camera range is 0 0.8 to 1.3 feet, and the multi-person camera range is three meters. So the cameras will have both a visual and an audible alarm if someone's temperature exceeds the normal preset temperature. Um, 
of course, uh, you hope to increase your ROI, by, so return on investment, by reduced queues. So say you've got many employees coming in. Um, I give the, the example of say you've got 10 employees and you're using disposable temperature tests. Um, that would be, you know, 50 tests per day. If you're looking at a five day work schedule, um, that is going to be Hi, Carly. Uh, just checking to see if we still have you online here. I think a couple people uh, lost a little bit of uh, sound. Oh, I am sorry. Can everyone hear me now? That's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry about that. I'm uh, I'm not sure where I uh, cut off there. Um, I was at the part about uh, the, I just finished up the increased ROI, um, so maybe I'll go over that again. So essentially, um, if people are using, say, disposable um, temperature thermometers, so say you had um, 10 people a day coming in, at, and I'm just giving a, a very you know generic example, um, but say tests were $5 uh, each, and you had 10 employees, that's going to cost you around $50 a day for those tests. So if you were to multiply that by, say, five days a week, that'd be about $250. And if you multiply that by 10 weeks, that's about $2,500. Uh, so when you look at those costs, that would pay for a camera in itself right there for that example of a firm with 10 employees. Um, if we look at examples of um, you know, shopping malls or um, a storefront where you have customers coming in, um, if you're doing uh, temperature screening, one, of course, you're putting those uh, people at risk. So this will prevent that. Um, and it will also speed things up. So when people are going through, um, essentially you're gonna speed things up because people aren't gonna be waiting to be tested because it will scan them within one second of them entering that camera. So it speeds up lines quite a bit. Um, and then uh, essentially the temperature detection cameras reduce the risk uh, associated to that administering staff compared to the manual temperature uh, screening. And overall, they're a quick deployable solution to be able to confirm that no one who has a high temperature is entering your facility or workplace or uh, anything like that anywhere. And so then we'll roll into uh, questions. Uh, so. Fantastic. All right. Well, first off, uh, thank you very much, Carly. Uh, before we hop into the questions, I'll just uh, remind everyone uh, who's been asking, we've had a few questions in the comments about getting a slide deck or the presentation sent to them. Uh, so we have recorded today's presentation and we'll be emailing that out to everybody uh, within the next 24 hours and that will include the slide deck. Uh, so one of the questions that is coming up quite a bit is about how well they work in a Canadian winter. So their accuracy for that. Um, so the, uh, I should have mentioned in there, uh, there's an operating temperature of the camera. So essentially these cameras are designed for indoor use. They are not weatherproof. Um, so Canadian winters, very good question. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, it, it, the temperatures in Canada varies from, you know, say Northern Alberta to, um, you know, BC for instance. Uh, um, so the operating temperatures of the cameras are 16 to 32 degrees Celsius. Um, so with that being said, um, we have had some customers who have looked at uh, deploying them in a outdoor application, um, but they would have to be protected from the elements under a tent or an awning and the actual camera lens can't be obstructed. Because it's measuring temperature, you can't physically place anything in front of the lens or it cannot accurately determine temperature. So um, in Canadian winter, uh, you know, at negative 20, 
no, it's not going to work because it's not the within the operating range or operating temperature of that camera. However, in you know summer right now, um, it could definitely be deployed outside, provided that it's protected under some type of tent or some type of awning. Perfect. <clears throat> Uh, and then in terms of accessibility, uh, for instance, for people who may, there may be employees who are in wheelchairs, uh, is the, or, or different heights as well, is the camera, is there an ability to change the position to take temperatures of a wide variety of heights? So there is, um, there is the ability to kind of adjust the, uh, like kind of pivot the camera up or down. Um, essentially, there is not right now a um, amount that is height adjustable. Mind you, that's a very important consideration. And I'm sure that that's something that could be easily, um, easily uh, provided. So uh, I guess, long story short, um, essentially, it's only going to be able to measure uh, somebody who's at that height. So, you know, it's not going to measure, I would say, you know, someone who's uh, three feet tall, for instance, you know, a child um, compared to someone who's six feet tall, it would may have to be uh, positioned at a different height. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then in terms of the best practices, for instance, uh, if someone just has a naturally higher uh, body temperature or uh, there's been a couple of questions about women going through menopause, what's the best practices uh, for not spending so much time uh, trying to decipher whether the higher temperature may be from the person's body or uh, from a, a, an infection or a virus like COVID-19? Well, um, from, and again, every, uh, every workplace is different, um, but what I've heard from some companies at, that what they're doing is they're posting um, a sign. So if someone did have an elevated temperature, you know, there would be a sign on what to do. Um, it, and it depends, I guess, where it was implemented. You know, if it was a workplace where you had access to the data um, from an employee who was coming through, then you would you would be able to look at that data and see that that person has a typically uh, elevated temperature. Um, of course, if you didn't or weren't storing that data, then you know, if, for instance, somewhere like a mall um, where you don't know that person or anything like that, maybe a recommendation of something like a um, a sign on you know what to do, maybe to go. Uh, and again, you know, every every place is different, so they're somewhat implementing their own policies. So I don't want to speak of you know what exactly uh, you know the best practice is, um, but um, you know I would say some type of you know recommendation for um, and and I think that you know essentially every place that's putting this in is is putting something what to do if they do have a high temperature. Um, of course, in that single person one, people are walking up to it themselves in that multi-person one that would be where um where you know someone else is monitoring those people um so you know maybe if somebody typically has a highly elevated temperature and again you know um temperature screening is somewhat a new norm um but maybe people will start you know carrying something that would indicate they had a high temperature um I will be honest, I haven't uh, been asked about that as much. Um, and, you know, the consideration about menopause is not something I had even thought about. Um, and it is, uh, uh, you know, obviously it's, 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 uh, it's a real thing and it's happening. So I, I believe that, you know, once um, more companies start implementing that, implementing these, then there will be more talk about what the best practices are. I just think because it's, not necessarily a new technology, but a lot more uh, being newly implemented that we don't want to, we don't necessarily have all those answers yet. Okay, sure. Well, and I'll, I'll add, Carly, that uh, this is, you know, this is essentially one data point that contributes to an overall decision making process. So a number of the organizations that we've been working with um, are using it as that. Um, many have developed a policy related to 
return to work and uh, likely this would be accompanied by a questionnaire or a next step if there was a temperature alarm. Um, you know, generally we wouldn't see a decision being made immediately from that point, um, but it would trigger a next step, um, which possibly could, like Carly alluded to as well, uh, might mean, you know, speak to somebody or a further discussion on, um, you know, have you traveled, have you, similar questions to what you all might be experiencing if you walk into a local business, um, you know, today. So it, it is one piece of information um, that would contribute to, you know, a, a, a solid decision-making process. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, and we have a couple questions about the, uh, the number of scans that the camera can hold so you mentioned earlier that it was about 10,000 scans that the uh the camera can hold uh and can that information be saved or removed so you can continue to take readings uh for instance as a work like a dvr where once the 10,000 images are stored it keeps the most recent 10,000 and, and deletes the oldest exactly yes so it's uh kind of like a dvr or like a constant loop so if you were not extracting the data, then yes, once those 10,000 uh, scans were reached, it would start to loop over deleting the oldest and you know storing the newest. Um, however, yes, you do have access and that's, um, so if you don't have network access when the camera is deployed, you can uh, either bring a computer or sorry, you could bring it to a place where there is network access and then um, you know, connect it to a laptop to extract that data. Um, and that's what I was saying. You can actually extract that in an Excel spreadsheet so that you have access to that data in the future. But yes, it look, works exactly like the DVR constant loop. Perfect. Uh, and we have time for a couple of more questions. Uh, Jonathan from... Uh, Levitt's standpoint, how could somebody, if they were interested in, in purchasing, uh, go about doing that? Um, they can certainly reach out, um, you know, even via via question in this uh, in this webinar in the question box, and and we can certainly get in touch with uh, with any individual that would like to, you know, discuss the requirements a little bit further. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, and uh, in terms of field calibration, how often would that be required? So for the single, so um, all, all the cameras are uh, calibrated by us um, at the, at, at, upon manufacturing. Um, the single person system does not need to be calibrated. The uh, multi-person system also does not need to be. However, there is that option of that black body stabilizer, which essentially is a calibration tool that constantly checks it. So there isn't um, any needs, any means, or any need for maintenance of calibrating the units. Um, however, there is that option to further increase that temperature accuracy on the multi-person one. So I don't want to confuse those things. So no maintenance required in terms of calibration. Um, and the one thing else I should mention on the software side, there is no requirement for any um, licensing per year or anything like that. The software is included. And the only thing that will be required in the future is a firmware update. And a firmware update is the exact same thing as you would do on your cell phone, um, you know, when you just install the update for free um, and then you've got uh, access to some of the new things. So uh, for instance, when we first supplied the camera, we were supplying a lot of them in Canada where it's obviously Celsius. And we've, uh, we, were, we had the request to supply it into, in Fahrenheit for users in the United States. So that was one of the updates that we've made. So some of those initial units that were purchased, um, they were able to do the firmware update in that they could change it from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Fantastic. All right. Well, that is uh, about the time we have at the moment. Uh, so we'd like to thank everybody who attended the webinar for today. Uh, thank you, Carly and Jonathan, for being a part of this. Uh, and as we said before, we will be sending out a copy of today's email, uh, today's webinar to everyone via email. 
Uh, in that email, you'll also see a uh, opportunity to take a feedback form to let us know what you liked about the webinar uh, and areas where we can always improve upon it. And uh, so it's only a four question web uh, survey and it really does mean a lot for us if, uh, if you guys can fill that out. So again, Carly and Jonathan, thank you both so much for being uh, here with us today. Yes, and thank you everybody for, uh, for attending as well. Yes, thank you everyone for your time. Take care.